In the day's other headlines, the mother of the late Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny says she's finally been able to see her son's body. But in a video statement today, she said Russian authorities won't hand over his remains unless she agrees to a secret burial. According to the law, they should have given me Alexei's body immediately, but they didn't. Instead, they blackmail me. They put conditions where, when, and how Alexei should be buried. They want it done secretly, without a memorial service. They want to take me to the edge of the cemetery to a fresh grave and say, here lies your son. I don't agree with that. She's filed a lawsuit demanding her son's body be released, but there won't be a hearing until next month. Meantime, President Biden met with Navalny's widow, Yulia, and daughter today in San Francisco. A White House photo showed their embrace, and in a statement, the president praised her husband's courage. Russian President Vladimir Putin chided President Biden today for calling him, quote, a crazy SOB. Mr. Biden said it during a campaign fundraiser last night in San Francisco in the context of the threat that Putin poses given Russia's nuclear arsenal. Today on Russian state TV, Putin said it was rude, but he suggested with a hint of sarcasm that it shows why he supports a Biden re-election. You asked me who we prefer as the future president of the United States. I said that we would work with any president. But I believe that for us, for Russia, Biden is a more preferable president. And judging by what he just said, I'm absolutely right. The White House had no immediate response to Putin's remarks. In Albania, lawmakers there approved a deal today to temporarily hold thousands of migrants seeking asylum in Italy. Under the five-year agreement, Italy will build two processing centers on Albania's coast to house up to 36,000 people per year. Opposition members of parliament tried to disrupt the vote today with whistles. That's as demonstrators gathered to condemn the plan. Those tourist areas will not be the same after the migrant processing centers are built there. They will all be sent to a closed jail, and from what we have seen in other countries, we have reasons to believe that this will be a security problem for the whole area. Italy has asked other European nations for help after migrant arrivals jumped 50 percent last year from the previous year. Here at home, a second fertility clinic in Alabama is putting a hold on in vitro fertilization. It comes after the state Supreme Court declared that frozen embryos are legally considered to be children. President Biden today called that decision outrageous and unacceptable. A federal judge in California has blocked a state law that targets guns designated as abnormally dangerous. The 2022 statute allows private citizens and state and local governments to sue gun makers. But the judge found it reaches beyond California's borders and directly regulates out-of-state commercial transactions and violates the U.S. Constitution's Commerce Clause. A Texas judge ruled today that a high school acted legally when it suspended a black student over his hairstyle. Daryl George's lawyer argued his months-long punishment violated a state ban on race-based hair discrimination. The judge sided with the district, which cited its policy limiting hair length for boys. On Wall Street, stocks rallied as shares of chipmaker NVIDIA jumped 16 percent. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained nearly 457 points to close above 39,000 for the first time. The tech-heavy Nasdaq rose 460 points, or 3 percent. The S&P 500 added 105 points and also reached a record high. And Hydea Broadbent, a leading voice in AIDS awareness, has died at her home in Las Vegas. She was born with HIV and had full-blown AIDS by age five. But as a young girl, she gained national attention, appealing for support of those with the virus. In 1996, she addressed the Republican National Convention and later starred in a TV special with Magic Johnson. Hydea Broadbent was 39 years old. Still to come on the news hour, the search for answers after a non-binary student dies after a fight at an Oklahoma high school. A respected geneticist and world famous opera singer partner on research on music's potential to improve health. And a private spacecraft attempts the first U.S. lunar landing since the Apollo missions. This is the PBS NewsHour from WETA Studios in Washington and in the West from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism at Arizona State University.